Hello, welcome over Unity friends. Um, this is a new video about a dual sieve circuit I received from um, from Mr. Tseng. Um from yeah it's already half year ago I got it but I didn't come earlier to, to make this video now because I have so much to other things to do and um I also was on vacation and um, yeah, a thousand other things to do, but now it has been coming the time to do that. Finally, I will show you now the circuit. Uh, he calls it the fleet circuit and it's just a basic dual sieve type circuit. I hope you can see that. Um, the transistor 2N222. And um, basic duty the, 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 um, here is the um, turret. Uh, here's the LED, and we have here one ohm shunt resistors. I will show you again um, here on the circuit diagram. There's a one ohm resistor we can measure on these. Uh, test points here on B3 and B4 uh, you can measure the, the, the voltage on a scope and we can also measure the voltage over the diode, the LED diode and we have here the A4 and A3 test point for the 1 ohm shunt from the battery um, this is now a circuit without the capacitor. You also sent me another circuit uh, with a 10 farad capacitor here. This I will measure later then. And okay, um, okay. Let's see. First, we have here. I have here the. Um, this is my battery 1.2. It's a um, 2,600 milliamp hours um, nickel metal hydride I don't know if you can see that no okay it's it's um you just have to believe me it's now at running here at 1.27 volts during running the circuit you can see here the um, LED okay now we um, do a test we have uh, V battery, also voltage of the battery is 1.27 volts and now we show you the um, on the scope the, um, the current on the 1 ohm shunt and then we'll, we will calculate the input power okay so here we go here's my scope uh, Sorry, I'm doing this in my kitchen, so uh, I don't have much space here. Uh, I hope you can see that. The scope is already calibrated and um, now I am on the... Um, I have a variable um, um, settings because I, my, my scope head is a 100 times um uh what has it said um divider 100 times divider scope and this is the input current uh one uh one diff is here now 200 millivolts and um i use this um 0 0.2 volts um scope calibration you can calibrate the scope here on this trimmer uh, capacitor here inside. It's already calibrated. Uh, I can show you it in a few minutes again. And uh, this is 200 millivolts on a 1 ohm shunt. Uh, so the spikes, you see the input current spikes are all positive. I can show you when I um, put this on, on DC. It's a <laughs> Um, so we have here the ground line, yeah, I just put that here, I can switch it on now again to DC, so we have a 
positive input current because I have here my uh, my uh, connected this here um, via this resistor here um, so we measure the positive voltage from from A3 to A4 here you can see A4 this is the, 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 the ground and A3 is here that's right uh, A3 and A2 is, is, is the same over here um, so uh, this is just only positive input uh, current no negative spikes um, and the frequency is about 6.6 um, kilohertz um, if I go to 50 microseconds now I'm now on, on the 50 microsecond scale so you can see that I'm now 50 microseconds and um, Let's see. So one uh, one waveform is one, two, three, three, um, three diffs. So fifty microseconds times three is one hundred fifty microsecond, and uh, one divided by one hundred fifty microseconds is about six point six kilohertz. Okay. So uh, now we have to do a graphical. Uh, interpolation how much uh, current is below the waveform here so this represents one diff represents 200 milliamps and so if we one of the small uh, lines here uh, getting, doesn't focus one is, is 40 milliamps so Probably if we fold it, it's about maybe yeah, 20, yeah, let's say uh, half of us, only fair, maybe 20 milliamps. So, um, so the input power is about, so let's see here, we have 1.7. Uh, let's see. Uh, I hope you can see that. Let's zoom out a bit. Um, yeah, one point two seven volts uh, times so let's say zero point zero two amps, and that's about two hundred fifty four milli. Hey, what is it? Not uh, twenty-five point four milliwatts. Yeah. Let's say roughly twenty-five milliwatts input power. Yeah. Okay. I hope this is clear now. Okay. Now we try to calculate uh, the output power. Uh, okay. So. Um, okay. Try to do this in one one scope. Uh, so now I first show you that the scope is also calibrated. Um, you see here about. Let's see. Oh, we have about two hundred millivolts is one diff now. Yeah, because of, of this high amplification, uh, because of my um, scope head here is a uh, 100 times divider scope head. Um, yeah, I only I'm unfortunately in the very lowest, and I have to um, crank up the gain here from the scope. So it would be better if I have a. a one time, also no 
no divider uh, scope head but sorry I don't have this in this moment so let's see now first um, um, the output uh, waveform on the on the diode uh, okay or oh, hey, let's first uh, measure the uh, the current um, okay let's see what we have now to the B4 or B2 and B3 um, test points we have to measure now the output current so um, B3 let's see again B3 and B it's also one ohm chunt. Okay, sorry. Okay, I connected now to these uh, test points. Here B3 is now here. Yeah. One can see that. And uh, B4 and B2 is this line here, down here. Okay. Now, um, okay, the voltage has just dropped, but it. Uh, so, the, the, the claim was um, let's see, that the output power is much higher um, than the input power. The spike, uh, it was a digital scope, uh, taken with a digital scope, and these output spikes. Are claimed by Mr. Tseng um, were much higher than the input power. Remember, we measured the input power about 25 milliwatts. Okay, let's see. I didn't um, didn't um, uh, with 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 amplification settings, but now you can see. Uh, let's see if I can if we can trigger this right. Okay. Uh, it's still the same amplification settings. One diff is uh, still uh, represents 200 milliamps, and now you see uh, these spikes are have a much smaller um, surface below the waveform. Yeah. So if we say if we want to do a graphical interpolation of the of the DC level. Um, you have to fold uh, these spikes back to each other and let's see maybe you can zoom a bit in there's not much not much space below the waveform so yeah, it's much lower the current uh, if you fold it maybe only if I can't ampli amplify this anymore so we can't see it better but it's much lower than the other uh, current uh, which I can still show you. Okay, this output current maybe it's only ah, maximum 10 milliamps. Also interpolated, I can show you this again. This was um, this was uh, the input current. Now yeah. you can see it has much more surface below the waveform. Yeah. And this is the um, the output current, so we see the surface area below the waveform is much lower. Okay, so let's calculate maybe about let's say 10 milliamps. Um, if we fold that, probably uh, probably uh, uh, more or less, probably less than 10 milliamps, maybe only 5 milliamps, but let's let's be positive, let's say 10 milliamps. So now we uh, want to see how much um, voltage we get over this output diode. Okay, let's see, so we, um, so we take, uh, let's see here, yeah, now. Um, let's see, I have to 
this now much higher. I have to re uh, to calibrate it input power. So okay, let's let's go to the these ten millivolts times hundred uh, means one one volt per diff now. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's let's um, put it down here. Uh, epsilon position. Yeah, now the DC ground level. And now here the DC ground. Um, yeah, is now here this ground line. Let's let's put it straight. Okay, this is the ground line now. And now I'm on DC input again. And about 50 microseconds again.